Hey, Mum! What? The door spin men! So, good night to you from International Football at Wembley. Colin! Good night. Colin. Hey, good luck, Colin, lad! England! We are the champions! And the whistle's gone, oh, and Winston! And the lads go marching in! And the game's oh, and the lads... over, Winston! Well, Colin, though, shaking hands with you, Sabio! Bloody class, that! It always tells! <laughs> Naomi! Look, it's over! Half the team's back in the dressing room! Colin's not! Oh, sorry! Right, it's running off now, isn't it? Like a bloody dream, that's all. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Don't you sweat a lot when you're excited. You probably thought Bobby Moore was playing a bit square at first, but he was only trying to level up with his fullbacks. That's something Ramsey's picked up from watching City. Winston, your mum and dad have gone to bed. We've still got half an hour before my last bus goes. The old through ball from Peters wouldn't have broken your heart neither, would it? He was starving, Colin Bell. You're no jealousy. Eh? Sorry about this skirt. It always rides up when I sit down. Thinking about the beast. Yeah, a you? couple of weeks in City's reserves to do Peters no harm. Winston, oh, thank you. Got the burning question now is will Colin be fit for City's match tomorrow night? Winston, the burning question is, where do I stand? It's important match, that City v Newcastle at home. Up the <laughs> Winston, we've been going steady now for nearly three months. I want to know where I stand. Yeah. Well? What? Pardon? Oh, what? Can you say something? Good night, Winston. See you, kid. And is that all you've got to say? Well, uh, no, no, of course not. Uh, well, uh, thanks for seeing me home. In time for the match, right? Like, well, the highlights. Good night. Naomi! <laughs> Don't worry, love. Joe Mercer will get Colin. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning. Tonight's the night. Pardon? City v Newcastle, two points, no danger. Was that piece of Swahili in any way opposite to the emptying of refuse receptacles and its ramifications? Up the blues! <laughs> Colin Bell's fit, according to the Daily Mirror. Oh, good. You've got a lovely smile. You remind me of a referee I saw last season, West Bromby City, away. He had a lovely smile. I caught him right in the chops with a pork pie. How <laughs> <laughs> about that for Francis Lee finding Colin Bell in the centre circle? Bell weaved through the defence, beating one out, two men into the penalty area, fixed his spot and bullies a daisy coin left foot drive, but the others got <laughs> A goal! A goal! A marvellous goal by Colin Bell, making the score here tonight. City 15, Newcastle nil! We are the What do you get for murder? Is it hanging or life imprisonment? In this case, the Nobel Peace Prize and the undying bloody gratitude of the human bloody race. I'm sorry to come burdening you with my troubles. You've probably got enough of your own. Everybody's got troubles, love. Just happens that we've got more than the national average, love. We've got bloody Winston. It's just that he never thinks of nothing else. We know. City, city, city. We know. What does he talk about in the summer? Nothing. What does he do? Rubs his rattle with linseed oil. <laughs> affecting my central nervous system. When I took him to meet me mum and dad, I forgot his name. I introduced him as Colin Bell. <laughs> One night he had a couple of rum and peps and got all romantic. He said I was beautiful. Too beautiful for him and would I like him to offer me to Mike Summerby? Man has no greater love. He's another city player. We know. We bloody know. It's like going steady with a football programme. What's he like at work? Oh. It's only eight o'clock. Has it been abandoned? Were Newcastle too scared to come out then? Have they kicked each other to death? Oh, couldn't you get in, love? Oh, I got in. Then I got chucked out again. <laughs> By the police. 
for, for hooliganism. For accidentally chucking a Cornish pasty at their goalie. I'm going to be banned. Banned from what? What in city? Me? Banned? N never to darken the turnstiles again. It's like telling the Pope he's been excommunicated. You'll never watch City again. Oh, Winston. How oh, rotten. Terrible. Shame that. I, I, I thought he said he'd... Oh, oh yes. It's a lousy liberty, that. Hey, uh, same again, Joker. Pints all round. Uh, cheer up. Don't let it get you down, Winston. <laughs> you have to be brave. Oh, you don't care, do you, love? Not deep down. Do I heck? Hey, your bin. It's empty. It's been emptied once. You're emptying an empty bloody bin. <laughs> Happy days are here again. Happy days are here again. They're not, you know. And what? Bloody here again. They were never bloody here in the first place. He hasn't mentioned City all morning. He's mentioned nothing. He sighed quite a bit and his eyes went quite moist as we passed that sports shop. And his nose <laughs> keeps running. <laughs> Manchester City Football Club. May I speak to Mr. Joseph Mercer, please? <laughs> Is this absolutely necessary, Petty? Absolutely, sir. He's undermining the morale of every man in the depot. Our entire productivity is in jeopardy. Look, because one bin man's behaving like a schoolgirl who's lost her false eyelashes, the whole depot's going to shudder to a stop. The whole town, sir. In three days' time, it will be under one big rubbish dump, with the Lord Mayor stranded on the roof of the town, all catching food parcels from helicopters. <laughs> Mr. Mercer's not available. Uh, say it's a Matt Busby. It's a Matt Busby? Who's he? <laughs> You're through. Mr. Mercer? Oh, I'm very well, thank you. Uh, and the lady wife, Jean. Uh, Mr. Mercer, I have a confession to make, Mr. Mercer. No, I know I don't sound like Sir Matt Busby. That's because I'm not Mr. Mercer. That's the confession I wanted to make, Mr. Mercer. No, the reason I phoned was... I've got a mucker called Winston who's a, a city supporter. Well, he's more of a hooligan, really. <laughs> he said I should apply for cup tie tickets in the usual way and rang off. <laughs> Winston, don't shout at him. It reminds him of the crowd at the match. <laughs> Winston. Winston. I've heard all about your tragic news. Yes, sir. But life must go on. Yes, sir. And work. Yes, sir. Yours, mine, number three gangs, everybody's. Yes, sir. I could, on the other hand, give you the sack. Yes, sir. But I understand that in happier circumstances, you're the hardest worker in the depot. Second hardest, sir. Pardon? Oh, yes, I'm sorry. Cigarette. Uh. <laughs> you don't you want it then? Yes, sir. Ta. Uh. <laughs> Winston, you must turn your mind to other things. Yes, sir. Other interests. Yes, sir. Well, will you? Yes, sir. And forget all about city and football. And Colin Bell. Yes, sir. Good. Now you're on the road to recovery. Sir. Yes, Winston. Do you remember you once sang Abide With Me to me? Will you sing it again, please? No. It made me very happy. Fast falls the even time. The darkness. 
steepens. The darkness deepens. Lord, with me abide. When will the help us? You'll drink this. Hot milk, butter and sugar, you'll feel the benefit. Shall I put the telly on for you? Yes, please. Or shall I not bother? No, thanks. <laughs> it's warmer tonight, isn't it? Yes. I might just undo the buttons of my blouse a minute. Yes. With it being warmer? I'd better not, though, in case it tempts you beyond the bounds of reason. No, all right. <laughs> Look, you don't have to agree with everything I say, you know. No, love. But you are doing. Yes, yes love. love. <laughs> You're in a world of your own. If I said the moon was made of green meringue pie, you'd say yes. If I said my mother was one of the Bee Gees, you'd say yes. If I said anything, you'd say yes. <laughs> Winston, will you marry me? Yes. <laughs> did you hear what I said? Yes. So did I, Tiger, so did I. Wait, man. He's even worse today, then. He keeps calling me mother. When I was torpedoed on a Russian convoy in 1941, I was marooned on this raft with six airy stalkers. One of them kept calling me mother. Two days later, he hit me on the head with an anchor. Right. What? Police constable Basil Nesbitt. Do you want some fino barbiton? <laughs> Headquarters. Yeah. May I speak to PC Nesbitt, please? Yeah, he's probably tinkering with the radar in his patrol car. He steals components from it, from it for his automatic lawnmower. Very nice. He should be chief constable by Christmas. He's my next door neighbour. Big chap, about 15 stone. Wife knocks all out of him. Oh, hello, Basil. Yeah, Mr. Sinclair here. Yeah, or oh, Basil. It appears that a member of my staff has committed a minor misdemeanour. Yeah. Winston Platt. Uh, no, Basil. He hasn't done anything on a double yellow line. No, it was at a football match the other evening when he inadvertently... What? Oh. What? It's already down on the charge sheet. Too late to get him off. Uh, Basil, uh, when's his case due to be heard? Oh. Thank you. Nothing we can do. The full weight of British justice cannot be averted. The Crown versus Winston Platt, 10.30 a.m., October the 14th. October the 14th, Jennifer. Yeah, me getting married. <laughs> and to Winston, you great banana. Oh, no, no, you haven't met him yet, have you? Oh, he's quite nice. Anyway, I'll send you an invitation. Look, will you ring Sandra up and tell her? Two weeks from now, Nobly Knees name, he'll be married. Yeah. Yeah, it is a bit quick, isn't it? No, I'm not, you cheeky article. <laughs> anyway, I've got a few thousand more people to invite, so try. La 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 la, la 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 la. <laughs> Breaking his neck. Eric! He's an egg. He's 
breaking my bloody heart. Look here, pimple chops, I've just had a phone call. Oh, yes? Inviting me to a wedding. Very nice. Inviting us all to a wedding. That's congratulations. Your bloody wedding. Bloody hell. Did you? Oh, listen here, I don't mind you driving me ball. I don't mind you driving the lads balls. I do. I don't mind you driving Joe bloody Mercer balls. But Naomi's got a lovely head of her. Most of it's a wig. Look, you can't just marry somebody because you've got nothing to do on Saturday afternoon. <laughs> You're getting married on October the 14th. No. And I don't bloody care. Winston, look, the question you must ask yourself is, will you make Naomi happy? Or is she simply what the textbooks term an Arnold Bell substitute? Call him Bell. No <laughs> Colin Bell substitute. Winston! If you're trying to reason with him, uh, may I suggest something? Anything. Give him a rabbit punch and then when he's writhing in agony, grind your boot round his tonsils. <laughs> he's a football fan. He's incapable of bloody reason. Now, Winston, I want to appeal to your finer feelings. Human beings have finer feelings. He's a bloody football fan. I'm a dustbin fella. All week I'm up to me eyeballs in muck and sludge. I will be all my life. And I still won't turn as much as PJ Proby does in one night. Fair enough. I'm a lousy bloody singer. That's why I don't sing. I'm a lousy everything. That's why I don't do nothing. And somebody sails around the world, you notice it's never me. It's Frank Big in Chichester. There's a lot of stuff like that I never do. The 400 metres hurdles in the Olympics. Swanning off round the moon. Winning the Monte Carlo rally. Spying on the Russians. Climbing bloody Everest. I'm never going to be the best in the world at nothing. Not even emptying dustbins. But my team are. The best team in history. Begin champions, my team. And when Neil Young puts a long ball through to Lee on the wing and he crosses it to Colin and it's lying there in the back of the net, well, then I sing. By hell, I sing. And it might only sound like a load of swearing and yelling to you, but it's the most beautiful song there is. And then comes another week of muck and sludge. And I don't care. Winston, you can't get married on the rebound. Especially on the rebound from a football team. <laughs> Your inspector's trying to help you. Say something. Mr. Sinclair. Yes, Winston. Get stuffed. <laughs> <laughs> He's going up to three lads kicking a tin can around. He's going to join in. He's kicking it. He's regained an interest in living. As far as I'm concerned, he can marry Madame Chayang Kai Shek. As far as I'm concerned, he can marry you. I didn't mean it. They'd never pass off as a blushing bride. Science isn't that wonderful. I might pass off as a football fan. What the hell for? To get this depot out of the refuse. It's open. Try turning the bloody angle. <laughs> it's Saturday morning. We, we don't work Saturday morning. Magistrate's court does, especially this morning, October the 14th. I know. I'll have to be there at half past ten. Not now. Hey. You owe me ten pounds. Hey. Through the good offices of my next-door neighbour, uh, PC Nesbitt, your case was brought forward to 9.30. Hey. You do have an incredible command of the English language. <laughs> at 9.35 precisely, Winston Platt was fined ten pounds for striking the Newcastle United goalkeeper with a cold Cornish pasty, for uttering 73 obscene expletives in the ear of a lady supporter from Altrincham, who subsequently had to receive attention at the trainer's bench 
<laughs> and from propelling three double-textured rose pink toilet rolls at a football association referee with intent to maim. Winston Platt was also banned for one season from City Football Club. <laughs> Let me in just once more. I could climb up the floodlights, then jump off and kill myself. <laughs> I said, Winston Platt was banned. Not you. I am Winston bloody Platt! I told them I was. So, whenever they see me approaching their turnstiles, they won't let me in. And since I've never been near their turnstiles, don't intend to go near their turnstiles and don't even know where their turnstiles are, that suits me admirably. And I can go and, and, and watch them every Saturday, for better or worse, without fear, without stealth, as long as Arnold Bell shall live. Amen. Come on. No, I'm sorry, Claire. I'll work, Mr. Sinclair. I'll work. I'll work myself my guard. You won't see them dustbins for dust. Oh, that's the most beautiful sentence I ever heard. Thank you, Mr. Sinclair. Thank you. <laughs> You're the bloody prince among men. Thank you. I'd just like to say thank you. Ta Thanks. <laughs> I say thank you. <laughs> There's just now the uh, the question of the ten pounds. Oh yeah, don't let me forget that, will you? I won't. Uh, can I have my ten pounds back, please? Uh, well, I'll have to pay you next payday. Only I need what money I've got for this afternoon. Oh yes, of course, for the wedding. What wedding? Your wedding. Whose wedding? Dressed like that, I think it's grounds for divorce. Married? I'm going to the match. We're clobbering Everton this afternoon, 17 nil at least. Winston, I thought we were getting wet. No, not on the afternoon of the Everton match. You know. <laughs> I'm reasonable. It's only once a year. You can get wet any time. You can come to the match with me. Look behind the goals. I wanted to get married. You'll you'll see Colin. And, and you can bother me rattle every time we score. It's all right, love, you rattle it. I'll just watch. <laughs> it's bloody grotesque. No, it isn't. It's true love. <laughs> well, what should we do now? Three gorgeous hunks of men and two L plus defenceless girls. Hey, do you fancy coming back to our house and having half an hour with me, Jimmy Hendrix experience? <laughs> no, it's our love. We're teetotal. Fancy a pint? Me as well. No point in going home. The telly's broke. Cheese, oh. Ned. You're twisting my arm. <laughs> <laughs>
because I didn't bother. It's a uh, Friday morning. Oh, yeah. Man cannot live by bread pudding alone. If you spent as much time looking at them as you do at them, you'd know what flaming day it was. Are you trying to tell me something? We want as big in wages. Yes, well, when I've unstuck my teeth from my tongue, gentlemen, that uh, obviously does not include you, Platt. What do you call them gentlemen and me, Platt? Gentlemen pay their debts, Platt, QED. I'm Mr. Platt to you. Over the past few weeks, Platt, it has come to my shell like ears that you've been borrowing money from a number of housewives. When I say borrowing, I mean extorting. When I say a number, I mean 43. When I say money, I mean eight pounds, 12 and six. When I say mind your own business, I mean get knotted. It became my business, Platt, when they very kindly offered to bring their dustbins down here and empty them over my head. I did the gentleman a thing, Platt, and I repaid them. Very nice. Go to the front of the class and be sick. Well, with that eight pounds, twelve and six, Platt, I could have bought a small nodding dog whose eyes light up for the rear window of my car. I demand repayment, Platt. And until such time as you make it, I shall continue to call you Platt, Platt. I like you better with your teeth stuck to your tongue. Carry on like this and mine will get stuck in your leg. Why do I get such lousy wages? Blame your mother. Pardon? Wasted her time years ago at the Aberyst with Co-op Hall. Doing the Paliglai with your dad instead of Aristotle Onassis. <laughs> By the time I'm 70, I'll have paid for that lousy Concord. And I won't have enough left to afford a lousy ride in it. Nobody ever calls me Mr. Platt. Or even Mr. Platt Esquire. Or a pigging gentleman. I'm not a big full of muck, you know. I'm a human being. Winston. Owing to a cruel twist of fate, a quirk of nature and a head full of reinforced concrete, you are a hooligan. You owe me seven quid, Mucky. Call me Mr. Platt. You owe me six. Say please, do you wish to feel the full weight of my boot up your epiglottis? Six for him, <laughs> seven for him, and eight for me. Ta. Ah. Four for you. Four for you. Four for you. And the rest? It's all a piggy got! <laughs> say, say, thank you, Mr. Platt. Bog off. Back on the bins, brethren. Hey, hang on. Were you going to speak, Mucky? Are we forgetting something? No. Every Friday, I'll give you all my wages to pay back what I owe you. Then, you all club up to lend me a week's wages again. Not until you've paid back all your debts. Agreed? Agreed. Agreed. But it's traditional. So are off crumbs. I've got no money, though. Winston. What? Gentlemen, don't make me sign. I won't do it. Well, don't. I won't. It was a lovely surprise, Winston, calling for me at work so we could go out to dinner together. Just when I thought life had lost all its meaning. Was it because your pounding heart couldn't wait till tonight for you to see me? Due to me being constantly in your every thought, more than mere words can say. So, how much can you lend me? I'm bringing me wages after work. I want particular for all of this year anyway. Just as much a big and gentleman as they are. <laughs> Mallorca's just the same as here. Only hot and sunny and a bit more Spanish, perhaps. Can I have a chip? Say, please. I bought them. <laughs> Bloody Delilah called me selfish. Me, ha! Huh? Selfish. That's two. <laughs> One. Pardon me for slimming. Naomi. Yes, Winston. Why am I a hooligan? Probably with you being so horrible and repulsive, I suppose. I mean, what will I do to make people think I'm a bloody hooligan? <laughs> Nothing, love. Winston, there's a litter bin right beside you. There's no fag ends in, I've looked. 
Shall I tell you why they've no respect for me? No. I mean, yes. Because I'm poor. Well, you get the same wages as they do. What do you spend it on? Oh, just the essentials. Banks, brown ale, city. City? Fact is around two and eight. Admission five bob. Toilet roll three and ten. <laughs> Betty, six quid. What for six quid? Betty, I'll back them to win every Saturday. Five nil. Well, Winston, <laughs> six pounds is nearly half your wages. I can't afford no more, you grep plunk. <laughs> Wouldn't half a crown be enough? Do you want to spoil what was a beautiful pig and relationship? Do you want your pig and ring back? Sit in my bloody team! <laughs> Going to work. Love it. Aren't you forgetting something? What? Oh, yeah, sorry. Uh, just one that. <laughs> only about four drags left on that, any road. Winston, don't you love me? Of course I love you. Want well, money from you, don't I? <laughs> Interesting route, that. Where did you pass your test at the Pleasure Gardens on a bloody dodgem? I didn't take much. You made quite an impression on those three pregnant ladies going into the antenatal clinic. Oh, that's that you're driving the old dash in the postnatal clinic? All this way to empty one bin. You're a real maniac. It's a special bin. It belongs to Colin Bell's antique. Or as another maniac casually mentioned in the public conveniences of the football ground, it might belong to Colin Bell's antique. Her name's Mrs. Bell. <laughs> what more proof do you want? A vaccination certificate. Again. <laughs> Birth certificates are. Oh, go and get a bin there. Why, well, Winston? What mysterious flame is flickering fitfully in that little soggy, clogged up brain? Colin might be going for his tea. There might be potato peelings in that bin that's come off the spuds that made Colin's chips. <laughs> oh, Colin, we like tea, but play it! I shouldn't argue with him. It's wrong. It's cruel. I should just melt him down and sell him for scrap. Cleansing Depot. Uh, may I speak to the inspector, please? He speaks now, madam. I'm not a madam, I'm a Naomi. Winston Platt's girlfriend. I'm worried about him. What, has he vanished? Never to be seen again? <laughs> oh, and he in the flower of his youth. He mustn't. He owes me eight pounds, twelve and six. He owes everybody, that's why I'm ringing. I don't know what to do. I'm writing to my MP. I've written to Evelyn Ohm. I signed it. Yours faithfully, worried brown eyes. Brownie green, actually, with a hint of hazel. Well, can you suggest anything else before the pips go? Either kill him in a crime of passion for the insurance, or use your feminine intuition. Thank you. If I had any of that, I wouldn't be going out with him in the first place. <laughs> Colin's auntie. And he had gone for his tea. And he spoke to me. Colin, to me. <laughs> with his mouth. But he said to you. He heard me shouting and yelling down the entry. Everybody did. We had complaints from Jodrell Bank. So he shouted at me. And he said hooligans aren't true supporters. And I shouldn't insult United because, because they're a good team as well. And I should be fair and sportsmanlike and courteous and considerate to others, and respectful. Colin said, What did you do? Give him a karate chop across his windpipe and set fire to his auntie? Oh, listen. It was Colin. He's one of nature's gentlemen, he's Colin. <laughs> I've been wrong all my life. I've been living a lie. You're not going to start being fair, are you? And sportsmanlike, and courteous, and, and, and thingy. Consider it. Consider it. My life's been one long fixture list of mistakes. Uh, double scotch, please. Tidy. Oh, sorry, what is the word? Um, neat. <laughs> Mr. Black, you're the depot inspector. Only until clocking off time, madam. It's now half past. If you have any complaints, you will kindly accost the borough engineer. He's in Tenerife for the town clerk's wife. No, I'm Winston's girlfriend. <laughs> My condolences. Winston always said you didn't drink. I don't. Make it a treble, please. 
No, in one afternoon, madam, your boyfriend has become the WVS, the Knights of St. John and the Liberal Party all rolled into one. He's a walking spirit of Christmas, a Maharishi Mahesh Yogi in hobnailed boots. You know, he, he promised 4,000 housewives not to empty their dustbins until I provided them with new ones. I'm allocated three new bins a month. It'll take 109 years. I said he was being courteous. <laughs> he then thought it was unfair for road sweepers to have to walk, so he offered them a lift in the back of the wagon. As a result, eight are in hospital being treated for concussion, seven are being fumigated, and the rest are on strike. His final act of generosity was to ring up the borough surveyor and tell him that I was underpaid and to offer my immediate resignation. Oh, God, it's worrying. Oh, it's wonderful. It's considerate. Oh, it's considerate, it's good, it's kind, it's highly commendable. God, it's worrying. After you. Gary! <laughs> Three pies, please, and a bucket of arsenic for me friend. No ice and lemon. Hello, love. I've heard all about you. Nothing bad, I hope. <laughs> if you've brought your wages for me, I'll buy you a drink. Honest? All to myself, like other girls get. And if we have a fag, I'll light yours straight after mine. Me wages. Right. Two for Eric, three for every breathing, and four for me, before you give it all back to the ISPCA. And my eight pounds, twelve and six, you so generously told me to whistle for this morning. If you will all wait your blood hopping rush, you will get your loot in a fair and sportsmanlike... Naomi, there's only four quid here, you get ten. You're going to be very pleased with me, Winston. Where's the other six pigging quid? I bet it on the football for you. Oh, <laughs> good girl. <laughs> I was only pretending to shout at you. <laughs> For a laugh. <laughs> Six quid for City to win, five nil. No, look, for United to win, one nil. <laughs> hey, Naomi, love. Well, the bookie said that with United playing at home, they were favourites. So they've a much better chance of winning than you'll be able to get all your money back. Clever? United? Me? Back in United? Against City? In a good time? <laughs> Have you made your last will and big testament because it might have left it too bloody late? I know, it's done. Remember what Colin said? I'm trying. <laughs> I'm trying. Be fair and sportsmanlike. Me, though. Hoping United wins? Me? Hoping City lose? Was Judas Iscariot a City supporter? <laughs> come on, Winston, say come on, United. And down with City. Gone. Of course you can! Come on, United! Come on! <laughs> Come on! Nearly! Try again! Come on, you! Again! It hurts me throat! Do it, Winston! Persevere! Think of the money! <laughs> Come on, you! <laughs> Naomi, what have you done? <laughs> Your eyelids is going bad. It's purple eyeshadow. <laughs> I called at your house. Your dad was having his dinner. He said you'd either be here or down at the French Foreign Legion recruiting office on Boiler Street. Then he ate another sausage. And belched. Twice. They're all going to the match. Aren't you? How can I cheer for United, love? I think it's a mortal sin. I'll be punished. One of my toilet rolls might be guided from heaven to land on Colin. <laughs> up the blues! Up the blues! Up the blues! Right up the piggins! <laughs> up the piggin' reds, no offence. We are the champions! Champions! Now, your dad tried to tell us you was here. Tried to. But he had a mouth full of pork sausage at the time. A shirt full of gravy. Off we go then! You don't laugh at my trick! This one we do! On your feet, beloved! <laughs> I just got to, uh, uh, like, uh, I must go, uh, I go, oh, I'll catch you up. <laughs> ah, gentlemen, uh, not you, Platt. Get not I it! Remember, Colin. Good afternoon. 
<laughs> yes, your father informed me of your whereabouts, then threw a hot sausage at me. Well, what was the score? What score? In the soccer contest. D did you win the bet? Have you got my eight pounds, twelve and six secreted about your person? They haven't even kicked off yet. Kicked what? Started. Oh, thank you. You learn. Oh, well, I can give you a lift in bonus here. Oh? My car. Here, oh, I, I, I can christen my... My brand new, genuine imitation leopard skin steering wheel glove at the same time. <laughs> Are you passing Old Trafford? Oh, yes, it's, uh, it's on the way to my Scottish country dancing class at the YMCA. Old Trafford's in the opposite direction. Don't be argumentative, Petty. I'll give you a lift back after the soccer contest as well. You'd send your own grandmother for eight pound, twelve and six, wouldn't you? Wish I could. <laughs> no, demando. She eats black puddings in bed with a pot and a mason carrier bag on her head. It has nothing to do with the money. I've always been a soccer fan at heart. Come on, Aston Villa! <laughs> oh. <laughs> all right. I thought all soccer teams were called Aston Villa. That's nothing. As far as Winston's concerned, Kiss and Cuddle might just as well be the name of the St. Mirren outside left. Sweetheart. We also thought it'd be nice to watch him squirm, but we won't tell him that in case we upset him. Any more questions? Sorry. Right, who's got the fags then? You. He dished out last time. Who's asking you, Greyped? Just being fair like. Mind you, he gave you three yesterday. Uh, just being considerate like. Well done. And keep your belly button of a nose out of this. Not very courteous, are you? Right, fags out or you'll buy your own bevy tonight. Not very considerate, are you? I'm just belt off yeah, here! Belt the cheese and egg, heavy breathing, you're creasing a jacket! Here, get off him, you! Get off him, will you? Fans is not hooligans. Name one of them. Winston Biggin Blast! <laughs> Anybody want another cup of lukewarm dishwater? Three minutes to go, and then either we're in the money, or Winston's in the, uh, mire. Thank you. You're welcome. You're all very fond of him, really, aren't you? Underneath. No. no. I love him. I wrote to Evelyn Home about him. <laughs> if I knew Evelyn Home, her boyfriend's probably worse. <laughs> I once wrote to her about me. She wrote back asking for a date. Mary Grant sent me a bottle of aftershave and Marjorie Proop started making anonymous phone calls. Is it all over? By the shouting. Nearly. About a minute. I, I had to come out. My knees went all wobbly with suspense and I kept falling over. What's the score? No score. That'll be a throw into United. Sadler to Charlton. To kid, intercepted by Booth, laid off to Summerby. Sorry, my mistake, bow you. Yeah, do you know that? How does a nightingale know how to sing? How does an elephant know where to die? How does a rose know how to blossom? How does a banyan know when there's fog? <laughs> Again, calm. 
again. Rain. Ja. Oh, well. Aston's picked up a claim from Stepney. Past one man. Two men. Through to best. He tripped over his sideboard. <laughs> he shoots. It's a goal. One run to United. Somebody, please. The final whistle. United won. And you've won, love. Won it. What shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses by one goal? I've just heard the eight pound twelve and six. <laughs> I mean the good news. Uh, can you give us a red goal, sweetheart? Oh, certainly, darling, Petty. You have it outside, is it? It's round the corner. But will it be safe with the football crowd coming out? They're all hooligans. Will you be told? <laughs> football fans is all gentlemen. There's no such thing as hooligans. <laughs> Sergeant, not a stolen car, half a stolen car. Uh, yes, you did hear me correctly. It answers to the name of Birdie Seer. Or in the present circumstances, perhaps just Birdie. Yes, thank you. <coughs> well, shouldn't you two be out collecting refuse? It's just a tentative inquiry. It's Monday morning. We don't get paid till Friday. You're not going to sit here till then, I hope. Hope and trust. Hope, trust and pray. We're getting paid today as well, Lulu. Winston's gone to collect his winnings. Our winnings, beloved. Our winnings, sweetheart. The pack of the tiny of mail boots. Clap hands, here comes Winston. <laughs> Morning. Two pounds. Three pounds. Four pounds. Eight pounds, twelve and six. Now, that isn't how gentlemen behave, is it, gentlemen? Eh? I mean, we are all gentlemen, aren't we? Of course we are. Even me. Oh, most definitely. <laughs> and you're not just saying that because I've got money? Oh, no. I've always said it, haven't I? <laughs> Eight pounds, twelve and six. Two pounds. Three pounds. Four pounds. Say, please. Please. Please, please Mr. Platt. Please, Mr. Platt. Please, Mr. Platt. May we please have the money you won, please? Please, Mr. Platt, may we please have the money you won, please? No. <laughs> well, I thought the fair thing to do, the uh, sportsman-like thing, the uh, courteous thing, was to show a bit of consideration for City. So I backed a lot on them to win 10-0 on Saturday. Oh, is that all you've got to say? No. Speaking as a gentleman, get stuffed. <laughs> Pig in hooligans. <laughs> <laughs>